I actually had an internship this last summer and I totally loved it. We made educational software, so as the summer ended, there was a huge push to make sure our products were polished and ready for the back to school rush. Once we hit our deadlines, the entire company collectively sighed with relief. To celebrate, all the teams at the company took a full business week off to develop some new skills. Some teams worked on digital facial recognition, others worked on vocal transcriptions, and others worked on an RC car piloted by artificial intelligence. <laughs> That's actually not too far behind the Tesla. Considering that some of the products at our company are made with Unity, a very widely used video game development engine, I decided that I wanted to learn how to use Unity. I wanted to create something that would be interesting for my coworkers to watch, so I considered my options. I remembered that not only am I a computer boy, but a musical lad as well. I thought a fun project would be designing a music visualizer, like the kinds you see on the front of those old stereo systems. But if I created this visualizer in digital space, it didn't just have to be boring bars bouncing up and down, it could be an entire environment reacting to the music as it happened. As more and more ideas came to my head, I knew that I'd found my project. Once this week had come and gone, I realized that I'd become an absolute master at this niche art, and in my great generosity, I've decided to share my knowledge with you, the humble masses. Please, hold your applause. Today I will be giving you the essential step-by-step -step guide on how to create a lo-fi landscape in one business week. Let's begin. Day one, the foundation. You need to understand that if this project is to be completed within the five-day period, you're going to need to learn some basic C-sharp scripting, shot composition, post-processing, music production. It's important to feel the crushing pressure of committing to a project that you might not be able to finish, but pushing forward anyways. You'll want to make the basic functionality of this visualizer priority numero uno. I highly recommend peer plays tutorials on this subject so that you can figure out how to conceptually and practically handle the roadblocks you'll encounter. You'll also want to figure out how this scene's going to look, what environment you'll be in, what elements of the scene are going to change based on the music. You'll briefly consider doing a nature scene, but you'll realize that mountains and trees and rocks bouncing up and down will look stupid, so you'll do an urban environment instead. Day 2, Baby Steps. Because you're stupid, and you don't want to accept help, you've decided that you want to do all of the 3D modeling for this project by yourself, despite the fact that you have next to no experience doing it. Put it on the list of things to learn. Actually, that's not that bad. Surprise yourself by picking up the concepts of 3D modeling relatively quickly. Also, as you begin wiring up these models to the scripts that you're writing with PeerPlay's help, make sure you attach a height script to your lamp instead of a brightness script because this is exactly what you were trying to do. Next, you'll want to design a shader graph, which is essentially a texture that you can change based on the numbers that you attach to it. So for this streetlight's bulb, I attached a slider to affect its brightness. If I pull the slider to the left, it won't appear very bright, but if I slide the slider to the right, it will. This will help us with the lamp's bulbs and the bouncing lights in the windows of the building. Day three, additional instruction. For extra aesthetic points, you'll want to give your street lamps some volumetric lighting. First, waste some time looking for this effect in the default settings. Eventually, you'll realize that it doesn't exist in vanilla Unity, and that you'll have to design it yourself. Basically, you're going to make a cone and programmatically change the see through -idness, just like we changed the light bulb. Considering that your 3D models are literally going to be center stage, I'd highly recommend having something that you're happy with by the end of the third day. The faster you do, the faster you can actually start composing your shot. Ask literally any artist and they'll tell you exactly how many tries it takes to get what's in your head onto paper. By this point in the project, you're going to want to finish peer place tutorials. Let me tell you the bare minimum you're going to want to understand by the time this tutorial is done. If you're looking at the entire auditory spectrum, the rainbow of sound, if you will, it represents all the pitches that humans are capable of hearing from the very lowest to the very highest. While your program is listening to a song file, it will cut this spectrum into eight even slices and will tell you what percent of the maximum volume each one of these slices is playing at. We'll then use these percentages to affect the elements of our scene. This is how the visualizer dictates how high the lights in the windows will be, or how bright the lamp posts will be. Day 4, Beautification. Because you've become quite fond of these little buildings that you've designed, you'd rather not have their roofs blown out by our EQ blocks. So, you'll establish an absolute maximum height that they can't exceed. Next, we'll turn our efforts to the sky. You'll want to change the atmospheric density so that we can have a more beautiful sunset. If you set this density to zero, it looks like you're on the moon. And if you set it too high, it looks like you're on Venus. So find a happy in-between that just slightly amplifies 
the beauty of the sunset. You'll have to fight the urge to go totally overboard on post-processing because every new filter you add takes you a little bit farther away from the visual realm of the PS1, where your project is currently very much entrenched. But if you go too far, you're no better than those Instagram models, so we're going to utilize cultured restraint. Day 5. Everything falls apart. Make sure that your whole project is in the newest version of Unity, because then you won't be able to use the Unity recorder. This is how you planned to export this whole project into a video, so now I guess you're out of luck. You'll have to downgrade to an older version of Unity. This will finally make the recorder work, but you'll notice that all your textures disappeared, turning your entire week's work into a messy bowl of pink jello. This is not what we want. Have a minor heart attack, say a quick prayer, and start fiddling with settings until you get your textures back. And finally, it's done. Your scene is modeled, composed, scripted, processed. But with these last logistical problems out of the way, I feel like I'm forgetting to tell you something. Are you serious? You haven't composed a song yet? That's the... That's the whole project! This doesn't do anything without a song! Dude, you're on the last day! This is the last, last minute! Oh. Okay, okay, I think we can fix this. I'm gonna use a trick that I learned by working in corporate America. Delegation. You'll want to talk to your incredibly talented cousin, Zach. He's a killer DJ. In about 30 minutes, he's gonna produce a song that's perfect for this environment. How do you do that so quick? I don't know. Ask him. And now, the long-awaited reveal. The products of our efforts, the fruits of our labors. Please enjoy this beautiful lo-fi landscape. So there you have it, a succinct, straightforward, no roadblock having method of creating a PS1 looking lo-fi city. Please join me next week on my continued journey to convince people that I know what I'm talking about.